Discovered FED, there are many different aspects of the FPV hobby that you either love, tolerate, or try to avoid at all costs. For example, there are many good pilots that love flying but will avoid building a quad from scratch uh, because they know that bind and flies have improved dramatically over the years and in many cases they're cheaper than building one from scratch um, because there's economies of scale playing into this. That does not mean that they won't change a motor if it burns out. Um, I'm the exact opposite. I get a lot of enjoyment in building an FPV quad, maybe even more so than flying it. Probably explains why my piloting skills are not better than they are. I mean, I like putting something unique together with my own spin on it. Um, I pick my own parts and sometimes even components that the frame that I've picked um, really weren't designed to support. And that's where the creativity comes in for me. However, um, there is one aspect of building a quad that I put into the tolerate bucket, and that is tuning a quad. I do not mind looking at black box logs looking for bad mechanical resonance in a frame, but tuning a quad to the nth degree, running pack after pack, is something I really don't like doing. Um, I tune to the point of getting close, which means I may get a little bit of prop wash when the quad is pushed through its own dirty air occasionally. So today we're looking at, at Betaflight uh, configurator presets and answer the question, do they work? We're going to start with my AOS 3.5 build that I just did. Keep in mind that the Betaflight defaults were really designed for, are picked for larger 5-inch builds. And they also took into consideration that you might have a bad noisy frame or you might have bent props. So really, it is a, the defaults in Betaflight are really not set up for this quad, which is a sub 250 gram build. And so it's expected that I would get a little bit of prop wash on this. In this case, you saw in my video that I was getting some excessive prop wash. So normally what I would do is just look at the black box logs once and conservatively change the filter settings first and then use the sliders to finish up the tune. I don't like really spending a lot of time on this. So today we're gonna pick a preset and see how well it does the default PID tune. You can see these are all set to default. Before you do anything, you always want to save a backup of your current configuration. So you go to the Save Backup tab up at the top, and then you just go ahead and save it away. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that again. So reconnecting, going back to presets. I want to use the mouse FPV uh, tune, so I'm going to go ahead and select Authors and we can scroll down to um, mouse FPV and you can see he already has a um, tune set up for the AOS 3.5 but this is the V1 but it's close enough and uh, we're going to take a look at the options you can see it's for a sub 250 gram build and um, I'm using an F7 processor so that needs to be selected and I'm going to go ahead and use uh, dynamic idle. I'm not going to put a motor uh, limit on it at 95. I'm just going to select these two which are already pre-selected and here you can find out all the information about this particular tune and we're going to go ahead and pick that. You're going to agree to it and then uh, what you're going to do is save and reboot over here and so it's going to go ahead and apply the configuration it's going to reboot and we're going to connect again we'll go back to the PID settings and you can see that the um, PID settings are dramatically different and um, if you look at the filter settings um, of course they're quite a bit more aggressive so what I'm going to do next is take it out for a flight starting out with just some easy hovers make sure that I don't hear anything going on wrong with the motors and then maybe a, a, a quick punch out or two and then land it and check the motors to make sure they're not overheating and uh, then we'll take it out for a flight and see whether or not the tune has improved the prop wash handling
3.5 4S tune from Mouse FPV, I can just say it's a night and day difference on the tune um, as compared to the Betaflight default. Um, it is uh, something that you definitely want to consider putting on if you're building a AOS 3.5 version 1 or version 2. I know this says version 1 here, but it works uh, great on the V2. Um, I'll show you some clips here. Here I'm doing some really sharp turns trying to bring it out, uh, bring out prop wash. Um, I'm doing really super lazy split S's where I'm falling into my own dirty air. Um, I like doing um, really slow forward rolls to where you're almost going backwards as you come out of it. Um, that also induces prop wash. So uh, this thing really held up well. My motors were um, very cold. Now, of course, it's 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit um, where I'm at right now. Um, so uh, keep in mind, of course, in hotter weather, you still need to check your motors out. But um, again, it was just, uh, the motors are just stone cold. Great, great tune. So highly recommend it if you're doing a sub 250 gram AOS 3.5 V1 or V2 build. Uh, I would also like to mention another author, uh, Mark Spatz from UAV Tech. Um, I mean, it's incredible what uh, he's done here. Um, he's a premier tuner. Um, he has a, uh, a YouTube site that I highly recommend. I'll link it below. But if you have a quad that you want to use a preset, he has all kinds, all the way from tiny whoops all the way up to you know 10 inch 1400 1700 gram quads he has cine lifters in here he has cine whoops so highly recommend um, his youtube site um, i'll actually post a, a link to where he goes through um, his presets he has all kinds of information and uh, knowledge bases as to you know what uh, the settings mean and stuff so definitely check him out so, uh, as always, I greatly appreciate everybody tuning into uh, my channel. Um, it keeps me motivated. Uh, I do it just for fun, and um, I like helping people out. So with that, happy flying, and thanks again for tuning in.